Hey, what's up guys? Just got the GTB E98 Pro by Asus. This is supposed to be a beast of a router. So I'm gonna do my full on speed test range test like I normally do using my following Wi-Fi devices. Just as a heads up, if you have a Pixel 8 Pro or a Pixel 8, this is a Wi-Fi 7 device. However, I'm unable to get Wi-Fi 7 speeds out of the Pixels with any router I test, uh, with any Wi-Fi 7 router I test because for some reason these have trouble connecting to more than one band at the same time, which is one of the features of Wi-Fi 7, uh, which is called MLO, multi-link operation, that allows it to get crazy fast speeds. All right, for those who dare, so very nice packaging. Um, got the cushions right here, so that's all nice. All right, so here it is. We got Republic of Gamers. We have a very nice integrated heatsink in red. I believe these are LEDs and we have some LEDs right here. Let me bring it closer to the camera so you guys could see. A WPS LED button. As far as the antennas, they go left and right. Up to a certain amount, they can't do a full 360. So this is the maximum that they can go. Uh, and, and pretty much that's the max right there. And then they don't come forward and this is the maximum back that they can go and they all um, work the same exact way. Okay. So now we look at the ports. So we have a power port, we have a uh, power switch, I should, I should say, uh, USB 2.0, USB 3.0. So you can actually hook up your hard drive, an external hard drive, and hook it up to your network. Now don't expect crazy fast speeds, but it is possible. I've done it with Asus XT8 in the past. I believe it was the XT8. Uh, so we have a factory reset. We have four 2.5 gigabit ports. We have a 10 gigabit port. We have a gigabit port right here, and we have a uh, 10 gigabit port right here for the, uh, if you want to do a uh, wired backhaul or it's, it says gaming, but you could pretty much use it for a uh, wired backhaul, which is what I'm going to use it for. Uh, but essentially a whole bunch of ports all very fast and, uh, yeah. And this is the bottom. So there is some vents over here, but it's, it doesn't look like it's wall mountable. Okay, so we have the typical stop. If you're having trouble, call us and then how to set it up. So we have the power plug right here, the standard US plug right here. This is 100 to 240 volts and output is 65 watts of power. That's the plug right there. This is a CAT6 ethernet cable and we have the standard warranty and some more instructions, different language. So it's been about a week since I've unboxed this thing. I have been using it as my main router and so far so good. So no drops, nothing out of the ordinary, super easy to set up. And I will go over the Asus router and web interface. In fact, I'll show you guys uh, the different colors, options you guys can do uh, with these lights in a moment. So. Asus did reach out and send me this sample router for me to review. So I did all my own speed test range tests like I always do. So I have all those numbers here. So let's jump straight in, starting with the internet speed test. And as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download. And this router can certainly handle those speeds because it has up to 10 gigabit ports. Now, the cool thing is we have the two 10 gig ports. So I actually could run a full 10 gig LAN, but my internet speeds would still be at five gigs. Okay, so when I test with the ethernet connected device like my computer, I do get those full five gig speeds. And yes, my computer obviously uh, can support those speeds as well. So just because the internet's coming in at five gigs doesn't actually mean that all of my devices get those speeds. And Wi-Fi devices are pretty much in that same category where they normally can't go as fast as that, but still getting some solid, solid numbers. So as you guys can see, I got just about a little over 3.2 gigabits per second download on the Wi-Fi 7 device and right around just underneath two gigabits per second upload. Uh, Wi-Fi 60 wasn't as fast, but still very fast for a Wi-Fi device. Now to find the true performance of this router, I do a local speed test server. So I make my computer into the server and I go from uh, Wi-Fi device to router to computer. So this way I get rid of my ISP and the public speed test server from the equation. So I'm really just isolating this thing, just testing out its signal. So with that, there is an improvement in speed, especially for the Wi-Fi 7 upload section, a huge increase in speed, uh, just a just under 3.1 gigabits per second, as you guys can see. So very, very fast overall. Wi-Fi 6C saw less of a gain, uh, but still getting some really, really good numbers out of it. So next we jump into range test. Now range is a big one because it will vary drastically by location. So essentially, if you have more obstructions, it's typically going to equal less range. So, um, you know, if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, things of that nature, it's typically going to give you less range. So I'm more of an open area. So I typically get a little more range. So at 20 feet away, you know, hardly a drop with the Wi-Fi 7 download speeds, but 
Um, definitely a drop with the Wi-Fi 7 upload speeds and not quite as much of a drop with Wi-Fi 6C. So still getting some solid numbers. At 50 feet, this is when I'm actually outside my place, still getting some crazy fast speed. Obviously, there's a huge drop in speed, uh, especially for the upload sections, uh, but still getting some solid, solid numbers. And even at 100 feet, this is across the street, I'm getting... <laughs> Still some absurdly good speed. So very good range thanks to the antennas on this thing. Now normally it's not a good idea to place a router next to the speaker or just in general not too close to other electronics because this can actually hurt your Wi-Fi signal. But I just placed it here just to demo it just to show you guys that you could change the colors. And then we'll talk about the router app a bit and I'll talk about the web interface a bit as well. So you get basically a bunch of color options. You could change a bunch of different colors. You could put it in night mode, which dims it. And then you can also do patterns. So they have different patterns and based on the patterns, you could choose colors and some patterns like waves, you cannot. Uh, like marquee, you can and gradient, you can. Uh, evolution, you cannot. Neither can you with Rainbow. You could also fully turn it off if you wanted to. And if you're wondering, even if I turn this off, uh, can you turn off these other LEDs? And the answer is yes, you can. You just hold it for two or three seconds, let go, and it turns off all the lights. And if you hold it for two or three seconds, it basically turns on the lights after a second or so. So in the app, you get to see all the devices you're connected to. You can also uh, do parental controls. And the cool thing about this is that all their stuff is included in the price. So AI protections included, uh, which gives you additional protections on top of the firewalls. You get parental controls included in the price. And then one cool thing about that is that, that you can actually choose various types of guest networks. And this is something new that I've seen with ASUS. So basically, when you look at this thing, you could do a guest portal, you could do a guest network, you could do a kids network, you could do an IoT network, a VPN network. So you have so many different options you can create. So basically, their guest networks are kind of like VLAN. So if you choose like a kids network, you could basically set a schedule that'll turn off the Wi-Fi or enable the Wi-Fi and your kids devices connect to that and you're golden. You can also do different Wi-Fi names, you know, different SSIDs, assuming you don't have MLO enabled multi-link operation. Uh, you could separate out the Wi-Fi SSIDs. You could do game mode. So you click go, it boosts the signal. Uh, but this router is already super crazy fast, even if you don't do this, again, assuming if your internet speeds uh, are also crazy fast. So that does make a difference. You also get a bunch of VPN options. So with the VPN server, uh, well, she could clicked on VPN server. Uh, you get a bunch of options there. So just in general, I, I mean, there's so much to do. Operation mode, you can run in access point mode. And if you have another ASUS AI mesh router, another ASUS router that could support AI mesh, you can actually create a mesh network out of it. Doesn't have to be the same model number, but I personally like using the same model number. Back to the web interface, you do get more options here, but this is the AI protection. You get VPN options here. I showed you guys in the app. Uh, wireless, this is where I was talking about where you can actually separate out the SSID so you could uncheck the 6 gigahertz, uncheck the 5 gigahertz if you wanted to. Uh, you would have to disable Smart to Connect if you want to do that. Um, but you, I mean, you get all these options, but if you enabled MLO, I turned it off for this demo so I, I could show you guys that you could separate out the SSIDs, but if you actually enable MLO, you can't actually separate them. So do keep that in mind. Now, I keep mentioning options, but literally, if you go to the professional tab within each band, literally for each band, you could adjust the power level you wanted to transmit and you get all these other options you could tinker with. I mean, there's so many options. It's, it, I mean, you guys get the point already. So this is kind of just standard with ASUS really. Uh, and if you go to the USB tab, you could do AI disk, you, you could do a network printer server, you could do um, hotspot tethering if you wanted to. And you can even set up a time machine for Mac users. To summarize, is it worth getting this thing? Why or why not? Well, as always, it depends on your situation. This is pretty much a premium router uh, with a bunch of options. And in fact, I also saw, I didn't test this, but I also saw that it supports USB tethering from the phone as well. So I guess if my internet went out, I can uh, tether with my phone to this and provide internet through that way. Um, again, this is not something I tested, but I did see that feature there. 
Um, and you can also hook this up in AI Mesh. So if you get another one of these, or if you get any other ASUS router that supports AI Mesh, you can still make a mesh network out of it. Granted, I personally like getting the same model numbers uh, if I'm running a mesh. So overall, I mean, this thing is very fast, has a ton of options, and has very good range. So it's really more on the premium end of routers. Obviously has Wi-Fi 7, so the latest in Wi-Fi standards. So it really just depends on your situation if you want something this powerful, because uh, this thing is an absolute beast of a router. So with that, thank you guys for watching, and let me know what you guys think.